Hey yo, what's up? Maji here, and we are back with Dive into the Seraphim, episode 7. So I've been trying to look for a guide around on YouTube, and well, with the Seraphim being quite a new group, it, uh, I was kind of wary with uh, if any of the traditionally formatted guides would be any good. And so I decided to go with a, a channel that has, you know, that's already tried and tested and so we are checking out how the seraphim was formed by the channel internet's nathan and so this is a uh quite a different format from the usual yeah uh from most guides that are out there for groups but uh internet's nathan usually provides uh a lot of good uh backstory um you know into the into uh where each of the members come from before the group was formed and you know as well as like uh a lot of information surrounding the group itself so this should be quite good so let's get right to it and check it out here we go today we get to learn all about the most hyped up girl group and honestly quite a while there is so much star power with the members hey. they got and potential in this group that you could seriously be witnessing K-pop history in the making. They K-pop history, be huh? Rookies. More like Titan rookies. Titan this rookies. Is La Seraphim. And we're going to cover how they were formed and Well, yeah, actually the when they and debuted, now. right? They broke the record for sales for a rookie group. Seraphim is a six member girl group coming out of Source Music, but also kind Although their record was also broken later Hive on. Because owns Source Music and helped form and scout the members of La Seraphim. So yeah, Seraphim Source is also like where the first girl group Hybe has ever G-Friend came from, right? Even the founder of Big Hit, now Hybe, the architect of BTS, producer Bang Shi Hyuk is leading And yeah, Hybe used to be Big process. Hit Entertainment. Now, La Seraphim debuted on May 2nd, 2022 with the song Fearless and a mini album with the same name, with no fandom name yet as of filming this video. Now, I've covered it before and you already know, Sakura and Oh, I wonder, is there a fandom name now? Of the K-pop world or still not yet? New girl group when they signed them after Eyes One's contract ended. But trust me, there are much more surprising members in this girl group. And they're already on their way to success. They even racked up over 380,000 pre-orders for their Ooh. debut album. Yeah, that's quite a lot. So let's learn all about the members. But hold up. Only 83% of you watching right now are subscribed. Is, is, is that you? Well, you gotta hit the subscribe and the bell so you don't miss out on another video like this one. Sakura was born in 1998 in Kagoshima City, Japan. Okay, so Sakura's Sakura, a 98 well, liner. To K-pop. I, I don't know where you've been living. Sakura was even famous before Ice One in Japan. But let's take it all the way back. It and yeah, she, she was a member of Ice One. To an opera. And from then on, she wanted to become a singer. She began by being a child okay. actress and attending oh, a she was a child school actress. in third grade. Things really didn't get serious for Sakura until HKT48. Those this eyes. Is a Japanese idol group based in HKT48. The world of idols in Japan. Okay, not quite familiar with that one. Korea, I'm mostly familiar with AKB48 and off, SKE48. Than performers. The standard for dance and vocability is higher in Korea than Japan, but don't let that mm -hmm. fool you. HKT48 is actually a group created by the same producers as the biggest idol group in Japanese history, AKB48. Oh, so they are related to AKB48. Sakura started out in HKT48 along with other teams and got popular enough and voted into AKB48. Oh, she also now, actually got Japan into AKB48. relationship when K-pop was promoting in Japan during the early 2000s, which led to the moment when the newest version of the Produce series was in production. Produce 48. They invited AKB48 idols to compete against Korean idols and trainees to form a new group. At the time, Sakura was busy acting and wrestling here and there, but still wrestling? saw time for Produce 48. Now, Sakura stood out immediately. I should find more clips of that. <laughs> and Korean idols I want to see more of that. To overcome, and she did. She improved every single episode. Slowly, the Korean audience began to fall in love with her. Coming down to the nail-biting finale, it was between the now I've member. That one, yeah. Young and oh, it Sakura. is one, yeah. It was revealed that Sakura would finish. Looks so young here. Second place. 
Still debuting in the latest produced group, Eyes One. Sakura made a name for herself in a whole new country in Korea. But once Eyes One's contract ended in 2021, that left a massive question mark as to what the future would hold for Sakura. And honestly, there were so many questions. Would she return to Japan? Would she stay in Korea to promote? Solo artist? Group? Really, there was endless questions. In the meantime, she did return to Japan. But the question mark would soon turn into a bigger one when articles started popping up claiming Sakura met with Hype labels and were in talks to sign an exclusive oh. contract. The home to BTS. So she was scouted out by Sakura and Hype. New girl group. And just like that, the most recognizable face in modern K-pop, not just in Korea, but Japan as well, was debuting again in a permanent group this time. As Sakura debuted as the vocalist and new face of La Seraphim. Chaewon was born in 2000 in Seoul, And now we South go to Chaewon, the Dawson Liner. Joining the entertainment industry. Getting her education at the prestigious Hanim Art School in Seoul. Hanim. Attended okay, with yeah. Many familiar faces uh, in K-pop. Following the idol path led her to audition and join... Becoming a more familiar team, name. She was a trainee there for only 11 Hanim months. Hanim Art School. Before Produce 48 started filming. Joined by others in Wollum like Hong Eun Bi, Chaewon impressed with her... But Chaewon's also in Produce 48. Following the viewers and producers of Produce 48. And they think she also made it into Ice One. Tenth to debut in Ice One. And just yeah. like Sakura, once Ice One's promotions was all but over, her future was in question. Go back yeah, just that sweet, innocent look here. Solo, but in the Seraphim, I actually, I actually count her as one of the more few magazine shoots here and fierce there, members. Not much other promotions. But then, that is when Taewon got a call from Hype Labels. Seeing this opportunity, Taewon left Woolum and signed with Hype Labels under Source Music, becoming another impressive piece of this new girl group. Pop, yeah. As Taewon debuted as the vocalist and leader of La Seraphim. Yeonjin was born in 2001 yeah. in Seoul, South Korea, but would move with her family. But Yeonjin is 2001 the liner. States. Growing up in the U.S., grew Yeonjin up in New York. Well, of course, fluent in English. Hi everyone who's watching both online and offline. Thank you so oh. much for coming to our show. <laughs> and that's why she has well. such good pronunciation <laughs> in Raise Your Glass. One of her first experiences in music was singing opera in school. Now we don't know exactly when Yeonjin got motivated to pursue a career in K-pop, but when she moved back to Korea, Yeonjin ended up in a decent K-pop company in Pledis Entertainment. Oh, Pledis. She wouldn't get too many pre-debut activities until Produce 48. Yes, Yeonjin was a bit of a crowd favorite on the show. She also got familiar with Taewon and Sakura, not knowing they would later be future group members. Yeonjin didn't make the cut and was eliminated 26th place in uh. the semifinals. Unlike Sakura and Taewon, who came from totally different companies, Yeonjin came from Pledis, which is basically like Hybe, because Hybe back in 2020 became the largest shareholder in Pledis Entertainment, and they became a subsidiary of Hybe Labels, Ooh. making it much easier okay. to work together and transfer Yeonjin It's kind of hard Pledis to keep track of, another company which is a subsidiary of, music, <laughs> of which big company. <laughs> Of La Seraphim. Katsuha was born in 2003 SM? in Kochi, Japan. And uh, JYP? Was actually a massive risk for Kazuha. Spending most of her life in Osaka, Japan, Kazuha would get an opportunity to travel to the UK for a career in ballet. That's right, Kazuha was a ballet. ballerina and was actually a fantastic one at that. She was personally Ooh. scouted by a famous Dutch ballerina academy in 2020, where she won many awards and competitions. Ooh. Things could have been going better for her young career in ballet, but that's when Hybe representatives came into the picture. Reports came out after the signing of Sakura and Taewon that Hybe representatives went all the way to the Netherlands to meet with Kazuha. Really? Hybe went all out trying to persuade Kazuha to join them and become a member of their upcoming girl group. I honestly imagine it was such a difficult decision to make. She just started a really promising career in ballet. Yeah. And then this opportunity came part of a prestigious Zua dance company leave ballet behind and accept it's offer. going to korea and training for only three months kazuha really is a one-of-a-kind talent in k-pop it's her a risk starting in a new group in k-pop kazuha brings that to her group debuting as the dancer and rapper of la seraphim kim garam was born in 2005 in Sanchez, south korea and she's the member with the least amount of info about her so far 
But here's what we got. Originally, Kim Garam wanted to become an actor. Okay, uh, so I know like Garam is not in the group anymore as of now. The film and theater department. Um, don't know how she got into hype, not gonna discuss music, uh, music planet, why she's gone though, because, because I don't think I have enough information. In Hyphen's music video for Drunken Days. Once she was brought in and met with the members of her future girl group, they described Kim Garam as adorable, cute, and funny. Mm. Even though some people wanted to paint her in a oh, different this one. light with misleading accusations false about her in school but now i'm sure we're gonna see that lovable kim garam soon as she debuted as a vocalist of la seraphim and last but not least Inche was born in 2006 Inche. in Midian, south korea 2006 liner was dance as she was a student Ooh. at deaf music and dance academy in Gangnam. she cherished her time there as she said it helped her erase her mind of hard and bad things in her way after two years in the academy, eventually she would want to take it further by auditioning for K-pop companies like JYP and Pleda's Entertainment. Pleda's staff probably had her come in and audition again to later join Source Music in January of 2021. Mm -hmm. Building out this new girl group Hive had in mind, Inche was revealed as the third member of their new girl group. And now Inche debuted as the vocalist and magne of La Seraphim. Okay. <laughs> At least <laughs> the wrestling thing, Sakura. <laughs> oh, come on, I want to find the full length clip of that. Okay, so yeah, that was how the Seraphim was formed by Internet Nathan. So, uh, yeah, this is more of like a backstory of each of the members of the seraphim uh unlike other uh you know uh traditionally formatted k-pop group guides on youtube where uh we get more of the clips of uh each of uh, you know clips showing off the personality of each of the members so if any of you guys know a good guide that i can check out uh please recommend one in the comment section down before uh, down before down below sorry my words anyways uh yeah uh about what we learned so far in this guide uh very interesting to know that sakura was uh part of a 48 group or uh, let me say a couple of 48 groups before getting into produce 48 and making it into eyes one i didn't know she and one young were the ones going up in the for first and second place in the finals <laughs> Uh, didn't really watch produce 48 and uh yeah and uh that chaewon is also there with her um and then it's, it's just such interesting to uh to know all these other facts about the members like how um yeonjin grew up in america and that kazuha was part of this ballet company um uh, stuff like that and uh it's also interesting to see like like uh the different things that connect them in the industry uh like being in like yunjin being in play this entertainment um yunche being an under source labels and yeah like uh sometimes with with all these subsidiaries and then with the big companies buying out subsidiaries uh sometimes it's hard to keep track right like uh which is a subsidiary of hype which is a subsidiary of cjnm which is a subsidiary of sm or jyp and uh yeah, so there are a lot of connections when it comes to the K-pop industry. And um like you can see like this like all these connections led to these opportunities to form this specific K-pop group. And yeah, and uh it was uh uh it's great to see the amount of success that they're having and uh of course it's really nice to have uh 
you know all these groups that um that sort of fill different sounds in k-pop nowadays this is one thing i like about the fourth gen of k-pop uh each of the more prominent groups they have this specific sound that is uh what they call that kind of signature to them right like how the seraphim sounds different from new jeans which sounds different from ive which sounds different from nmix and uh all this variety in the world of fourth gen k-pop i'm really really loving it it keeps things fresh keep keeps things entertaining and keeps my uh k-pop playlist uh you know uh really really uh diversified is that the proper grammar anyways yeah uh once again if you guys can recommend a more traditionally formatted guide so that i can you know get to know the members personalities a bit more so this was more of their background but yeah usually i i i watch like guides and uh variety stuff uh from girl groups to get you know a measure of the personalities of the members so <laughs> before i pick a bias so as of right now i i don't really know who to pick as a bias in the seraphim because i i usually like to get to know the members first anyways yeah um that's the end of the seraphim dive into the seraphim week uh going forward well by the time this video releases i will hopefully have uh gone through surgery and uh earlier in the day and so this coming next week might have some releases in store might not depending uh i'm trying to get some stuff recorded in advance so that it could release this next coming week but if not uh please bear with me and yeah i will be recovering from my surgery for the next week or so so anyways yeah that's it for my reaction to uh this is how the seraphim was formed by internet's nathan um and that's it for dive into the seraphim week so don't forget to like comment and subscribe also feel free to check out my patreon where i also post uh reactions to longer form content more casual content most of which is available for free with some extra bonus content set aside to those uh, for those who are kind enough to subscribe so uh don't be afraid to check it out the link to my patreon is, it is in the description down below why am i stumbling so much anyways thank you so much for watching thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful groovy journey with the seraphim and until next time have a great day everyone and hope to see you guys in the next video bye for now